Welcome back, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, our, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Philosophy of Art and Science podcast. I am joined today by my dear brother, Deacon Gorgorios. Before we go to him, as always, if you support these ventures, make sure to go over to patreon.com slash tawahado. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash tawahado. You could also join the YouTube channel directly if you're watching this on YouTube. Deacon Gorgorios, and I study. And I still ling uh, Diakwanelok. It's wonderful to be uh, to be here. I'm so excited. I'm I'm glad to have you. Long overdue. Um, you probably don't know this, but uh, requested by by many people actually. And and does he send it to us? Yamre benal vigyegam betalo. It's uh, it looks good on us. So I want to eventually get to the idea of how you've begun studying in the classical traditional school of Ge'ez poetry, but just in case, I'm sure most of my audience already knows you, but just for the, the few who don't, could you talk about how, you know, you, you and I would have no issue surviving in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church as she has been for at least a thousand years in Ge'ez and Amharic, and yet you and I have spent time kind of reaching out to the youth in, in English. Why would you reach out to the youth in English when you're obviously, uh, you don't need it. Like on a personal level, you don't need it. Yeah, um, that's a very good, very good question. But first and foremost, um, I want to thank you for, to, to be honest, um, for providing this wonderful platform. And I was, uh, you know, I've been um, a dedicated follower of this program. It's been wonderful to watch. And I was able to see what you did with Diagonda Dawit as well, because like Kane is like my thing, and some of uh, the the people that came on and actually spoke about the language is in itself and uh, how you know functional it is even in the language Amharic, even in the, within our culture, within our everyday communication. So that, that was wonderful to watch, uh, and having this program is is wonderful, and for a lot of people, it's you know. It's very informative and it's uh, it's amazing the, the things that you do. Uh, as far as the English program, it's something that I did not even believe in to begin with, believe <laughs> it or not. Uh, I remember, I think it was like five years ago, uh, going back uh, five years, uh, seems like a very long time ago. But I remember uh, it was a conference that you were at as well. In, That's in when we Minnesota. met. That's we we, we served in Minnesota, Minnesota at Holy Trinity. I believe it was a cathedral at the time. Okay, yes. The, um, Abuna, his beatitude, Abuna Zakarias, I believe, was yes. was there often as well as at the other Holy Trinity in New York, which I had also yeah. visited. Yeah. And um, for those who don't know, this was pre-reconciliation of the, of the synods <laughs> at the time. Um, yes. But what brought us together was UOTY, which you're U -O -T -Y. heavily involved in. You want to tell yes. the people about that? I wasn't even I wasn't even involved. Oh wow! Why when I came? That's the thing. I wow. know, I remember uh, a brother of mine, dear brother of ours as, as well, Deacon Ephraim, mm -hmm. uh, was the one that used to call me, and then you know he was like, you know, we're we have begun this program in English to reach out to the youth, and then you know I'm listening to him. I, I used to be very dedicated and very direct, like Amarinya. Everybody must learn Amarinya. Guys, go to liturgy, go home. That's that's it. That's God's way. That's the way of salvation. That's my understanding. And then when he brought up this idea of like English service, like what is this man talking about? You know, like he's trying to ruin the, the whole concept of the church and traditions are going to be destroyed. And then I was against the whole concept of English program to, to begin with. Uh, and then, you know, I used to give him this, you know, Habesha reasoning like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm thinking about it. I'm going to buy the ticket. Don't worry about it. I'm thinking about it. Uh, and then, <laughs> but he was very, I don't know, as you know, he's very persistent. Like, oh, did you buy your yeah. ticket yet? Uh, I remember it was like two days away from the conference and he calls me and then he says, like, did you buy your ticket yet? Because I'm about to buy your ticket right now. <laughs> and I, was like, no, no, no. I was like, oh, I, I gave in, I bought my ticket and I went. And then the very, uh, the moment that I got there, I remember it was, uh, Kasi Saifa, who was, uh, was not even Ethiopian, he was a Caribbean, uh, descent who actually learned the faith went to uh, the Theology College back in Ethiopia, and he was able to become the dean there. He was able to work in the Holy Synod as well. An amazing father of ours. Uh, he was preaching at the time. And I remember the title specifically. You know those 
life changing moments. You yeah. remember exactly what they're talking about. It was about spiritual warfare. I remember that uh, that sermon very, very well. And then them speaking in a way like that just every word that they said sunk in into my heart. It was not it was not just me listening to it. And then at the moment, I was like, okay, this is what Christ was talking about. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, it made it clicked. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I can disconnect. My own stuff. You're there. You're there. Yeah. yeah. It, it clicked and it was it went directly into my heart every word that they were saying the 40 minutes went by so fast and the moment they finished i was so upset like why is this over <laughs> and i was so sad like this was the, the the greatest thing i've ever seen and i was able to see witness the the youth coming together singing songs and giz and amarinya and then i i was able to see that this language barrier that we have uh, this this faith that we have is not confined to, to language. Uh, the language is just a means to salvation. And that was the very first time that I was able to actually understand that. I was never for English services and all these things. But the moment I saw that, the moment I heard their sermon, I realized that it is the Holy Spirit working through the servants that were there to actually show me this is the way. Uh, and from that point on, I truly believed in in the service. Yeah, for me, it's easy to understand, to grasp Amharic English. Somebody from Ethiopia could come and preach, and get, you know how we love quoting giz, and they, you know they quote <laughs> giz they, when they very like, when it gets intense, uh, uh, and then they speak Amharic. Very, you know, it's not just you know communication type of Amharic, but it's proper Amharic. It's what we call like proper English is completely different than proper. Amharic. Uh, like random English that we speak with the slang. So it's right. like that as well. The people that actually stand at the altar and actually preach are completely different. I'm hard that they use the language that they use, the wordings and the way that they speak are completely different. And uh, I was able to understand all those things. Uh, but finally, in that moment, I was able to see that a lot of the youth who are not, who don't have this privileges, who don't understand the language in the way that I did, were able to receive the word of God, you know, touch it to my heart. And I was able to see people changing their lives from that moment on. I saw youth crying. I saw youth engaging. I saw youth coming back and wanting more. I saw youth uh, testifying that this was their defining moment. Wow. I, there was a lot of people, groups that we had. I remember the discussions that we had in the, in the evening. I, I was able to stay at... Uh, house, and then there was a lot of people that participated. There was a moment like where this uh, one of the the girl that came from Philadelphia, she was testifying. Like she, was, I was I was thinking about ending my life just two oh, weeks ago, I and I came to this conference, and I don't know what to tell you guys, but I have found my purpose. I know I have worth, and then hearing that their testimony. Uh, experiencing that really uh, changed my life, and I was able to understand why why Christ, you know, sent the Holy Spirit so that they speak in so many different languages. So from that point on, I kind of changed my perspective on the English, and that English is a means to bring people to the church. Once they understand their faith, one once they understand salvation in God, they will you know, they'll dig dig even deeper and then try to understand the lingo, the language of the church as well. Once they start learning the language of the church, they know the faith even more in depth. And that's what I saw uh, the last five years. And that's why I'm here, you know, advocating for English, for English services, because I know what it did for me. I know what it did for a lot of servants. I'm sure Ted Dekwondai talked about it as well. So that, that, you know, it changed my perspective. It changed my heart. And I know that it does the very same thing for a lot of people. So that's why I'm in, uh, I'm in this. That it's very okay. beautiful. Yeah. I, 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 especially I didn't know that story about the testimony. Mm. That that's such a, an issue that is you know still taboo. I'm, I'm not going to call any people out, but you know I've been in different Ethiopian scenarios where you hear a story and you realize it's made up. You know. And the truth is they're trying to hide people's committing violence against their own body in that shape and, and in that way. And I, I understand some of the reasoning behind it, but just the kind of openness that you had and, 
and the fact that the community was able to provide something that that helped make a life changing decision. I mean, you and I at various times get convicted to serve, but this person's literal life was on the line and it changed. That that's an incredible story. And I'm sure there are other people who didn't even give testimony, but maybe had similar thoughts. So I appreciate you bringing that up. And one of the funny things is I've had, if not exactly the same kind of feelings as you, mixed feelings about, for example, when and how and if to do the English liturgy. Because it's one thing to, you know, to teach in English. Well, what about singing in English? Well, what about doing the liturgy in English? And and I was kind of one of the front runners, one of the early people doing all of those things since about, I'd say, 2012, been teaching in English and then converting like scores of songs and doing the liturgy since about 2013, first as a mimen and, and, and later on in, in 2015, actually as a deacon. Um, so for moving from the faithful to the diaconate. But the important thing is, I remember throughout all this time, people kept accusing me. They're like, it's like, oh, you want to make Amharic disappear? And it's like, they don't know me. I teach adults Amharic. I teach children Amharic. I was born and raised here and I speak Amharic. I was like, how much more Amharic can I do? And it's, it's funny. Sometimes people just have this gut reaction. So my favorite thing, um, you know, there are two of my favorite things in the church. One, my favorite thing is like when people with PhDs and master's degrees are still faithful because people think you have to be dumb to go to church or you have to be poor to go to church. So mm. when they see like rich people who love to go to church or people with high degrees that love the church, it shows, you know, uh, as, as Mary says in her prayer in, in Luke, that God will humble the proud. Uh, he, he'll make them lowly. And uh, the second favorite thing, though, besides that aspect is showing people who have deep deep desires to improve their Amharic, like you said, the difference between like middle school and high school chatter versus like the university lectures that we get for mm. free in the church mm. Mm. And, and someone who wants to go deeper in Amharic and in, and in Gu'uz. And so obviously you're someone who wants to increase even, you, you already are the native speaker of Amharic, but you want to learn more. And then beyond that, you want to dig into Kini, which is, uh, right, we've talked about it before on this program, submission to the Lord through Gu'uz poetry. Can you tell us about your interest in, in Beta Kini? Because you could have gone to a liturgical school, you could have gone to a Digwa school or, or a Kwakwam or any of the other, you know, traditional schools. And maybe you still will, uh, or maybe you have in the past that I don't know about. But uh, <laughs> what, how did you choose Kini? Um uh it's not even a long story or anything like that uh but like like you mentioned i kind of wanted to um bring up this this one one story that uh that happened to me when i was preaching um an sf san francisco i was in san francisco uh, actually the conference i had was in san jose but in san francisco i was invited to preach after the liturgy i remember um one of the questions that was brought up i was i was i was preaching like in front of the congregation i was in our speakers and everything um and one of the questions was that are you guys trying to destroy the, the language of Amharic? you know that's their kids should learn this thing uh and then i like i i you know i didn't expect that question especially you know after you preach uh it, it, you don't expect things like that you know usually expect like you know go, go about I mean, your day type of situation you know but uh you know this lady asked and i asked her and then i just replied by with, with a question i was like you know what is the language of the church and she said i'm hark i was like no it's 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 not <laughs> i'm hark i'm hark is there so that because there was a lot of people who were not able to speak giz over time people became fluent in amharic and they didn't understand giz so the church uh, compensated all that by translating everything into Amharic and changing a lot of chants into Amharic, prayer into Amharic, songs into Amharic, so that you engage with the, ch the church, you understand your faith. That's what it is. And most people, you know, miss that concept. Uh, for me, uh, as far as my um, journey towards Kene, um, it's something that I've always been interested in, something that I've always admired in people, something that I always watched happen in my life, and after, you know, during Korban with, with Tano Mogar, uh, but I was, you know, I never had the opportunity or the chance to do it. 
Uh, and then I remember my brother Declan Dawit, uh, he was at the um, the third uh, conference I was there in Kansas. Uh, it was the time he came back from Debra Libanos. He dedicated his whole life, you know, you know, left everything you, you spoke of, you spoke to him. He went to Debra Libanos, learned, and he came back. Uh, and I realized, like, and then I remember one thing that he told me. Uh, it was a lot of deacons as well there. Uh, and he mentioned in your in your program as well, if I can do it, you can do it too. And then I was like, shoot, that makes a lot of sense. But fast forward <laughs> four years later, I was here in Las Vegas uh, for a conference. Um, and then I was here and I was able to uh, meet my long time uh, mentor ever since I was a child. I went to Ms. Kaiserman for a preschool in Sintadiskilo. When I was in Sedeskilo, Abba Theodros was a Kenyan member and Miss Kaizunan. So my dad had a lot of conferences to go to. So he would stay preaching. He would run around preaching until like 7 or 8 p.m. So he wouldn't even come to the Like imagine I'm like spending time in school. After school, I have to stay within the church until he finish, finishes preaching. So whenever I stay uh, at, at the church, it's a church school, I would stay with Abba Theodros. And then, you know, they would, talk to me about church. They would teach me little things about uh, Giz because Giz was one of the uh, um, the subjects that we had to learn well when we were in uh, Ms. Kaya Zunan. In elementary uh, school. In elementary school. I, That's was... amazing. <laughs> I wish that was a requirement throughout all of Ethiopia. I know the Tigray region made yeah. it a rule. At least the Amhara region needs to follow through. And all of Ethiopia, that would be great. That it's a must. It's it's not you know it's not a language of certain region of Ethiopia. It's a it's a language of the church, uh, and it was it was good. Uh, it was not like you know uh, what you call it. it's not structured well because it's it's in Ethiopia. It's just like kind of teach them these things. I was like I know what to, and then that's like the the lesson for the week or something. I don't know. It was it was good times, so, but we I enjoyed it. Uh, and then Abba Tedi will actually help me out learning it so uh, we disconnected when i moved to the states we met again here in las vegas they moved from Nor norway i came here for a conference uh we were having lunch i remember uh we were, we were eating uh, and then they're like <laughs> and then they just you know looked up and they're like how amazing is this you know after all these years we were able to reconnect imagine if you're here we can do so much things i love the things that you do you preach and all these things if you're here, you can teach the kids, and I can teach you, uh, Kenny. I honestly, this is the very first time I'm speaking about this, by the way, very first time. Uh, and I said, "Okay, I'll do it." And then they were shocked, right? The <laughs> I was like shocked. I was like, you know, it was like kind of like you know kindness, you know, you It's just the chata. Yeah, sometimes people business. say it and they don't hundred percent mean it, but you, yeah. yeah. You checked them out. <laughs> <on. laughs> Literally, what happened? Uh, uh, and then they're like, I don't know what, you know, I was like, I'll do it. I, I have to travel to Australia for a month, but once I come back, I'll, I'll come here and learn from you. They were shocked. I was shocked. Uh, I, was, I remember coming back to my, uh, my, my room. Uh, and I was like, what did I just say? You know, <laughs> but it's something I was certain of. Yeah. So I was shocked and surprised at the fact that I wanted to commit myself to learning, but I was also, you know, taken back from it. I was, I was like, I was certain that this was the right move because something in me, my gut said it was the very right thing to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, knowing that what we do requires a lot of knowledge uh, if I, if, because like i left my work i was i had a good you know i was functioning i was i had a, i was partners with at a dealership in, in denver i was working with my brother Jonas. Um, i had a good work but i quit all that because i really enjoyed this service made me happy and i said if i'm going to commit myself to the service i have to be educated enough to answer the most difficult of questions uh, and people see you when you start serving as you know the church you know they expect every answer from you so you have to be prepared for everything that is asked of you and the only way to actually know the church in depth was through 
the language gears. And I know that can it stimulate something in your brain that you cannot mm -hmm. exercise with anything else. It's philosophy, science, math, whatever. I don't know what language to use to describe what can it is to me. Uh, and that's, that was everything that I expected it to be. So that's the moment I got into uh, any inspiration from my youth wanting to learn. Yeah. David saying that it, if I can do it, you can do it. Me being here in the perfect time, in the perfect moment with Abba, I think the stars aligned per se. And I was yeah, it's, it, that's beautiful. May God accept your sacrifice like the sacrifice of Abel and Melchizedek because someone sees you in that micro moment, they may think, oh, he's just going on a whim or something. But like you said, throughout your life, you've had these little seeds sown. And in that moment, you had the faith, you had the trust in Abba Teodros, and you had the trust in yourself. You dropped what you were doing. And it, it, it reminds me of like the time of the apostles. They literally just dropped what they did and, and they went into it. Did you know like what type of a commitment do you make? Like, how long does it take to to learn uh, Kenny? That, that's a, that's the funny thing. So, um, so when I came, I was like, you know, I try to convince myself that like, six months. If you get to, you know, if you understand the concept of Kenny, that should be enough for you to move to kind of move on, and then you can do your own thing. Uh, and then when I came here, when I started talking to them, Kenny, if you want to learn, learn Kenny, it actually takes two to four years at mm -hmm. least. That's if you were an advanced student type of situation. Uh, and I didn't know how long it would take, but I saved myself eight months. And then <laughs> it's, it's, it's just amazing, incredible how God works. Um, we started uh, in January of 2020. Um, and then three months in, the pandemic hit. <laughs> you can't go anywhere. <laughs> That's a, for me personally, you know, you, it's, uh, I, I don't like taking things just for myself because the pandemic happened for the whole situation. But I felt like the pandemic was the perfect thing that happened for me. I'm not talking about, you know, as, as far as the negative aspect of it, but yeah. as far as my personal life, it became a very good thing. It became uh, the means for me to stay and focus on my my studies. Everything closed, no work, no service. Nobody calls you talking about you need to fly out here. It's just, none of that. And then I was able to stay at home, stuck at home. You can't live anywhere. Uh, and dedicated my time to study. So it kind of made it easier uh, for me because I was, you know, taught at uh, 5, 5 a.m. Go to 5 a.m. You count your kanes. By 9 a.m., you tell uh, your, your the kane that you have prepared for the day to Abba. They fix it up. And then they tell you to uh, give it muya uh, setao. So I'm working to go. And then me, there's another monk that is studying with me as well. And then you, you do that. During lunch time, while we're eating lunch, Abba gives Zarafa. You know, Abba has this modernized way of, usually Zarafa is at a different time. Our Zarafa is during lunch time. While, while, while we're eating, we're doing this. Kind of, we're reviewing and Abba is at home. It, that's when you snatch someone else's poem from them, or what? What exactly is the the zarafa? Zarafa is when the kane zarafa lukatawal, the master of or well, the teacher of the kane, will like right then at that moment will bring out kane. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Like on uh, okay, it's like ad hoc, the, like on the fly. On the on the fly, they just yeah. they just be like. Yeah, I've heard people say when someone's asked to teach you and they don't give you any advance notice. No, no. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Like, you can, this could happen to a lot of people, especially uh, if, you, if they know that you have studied Kane, you can be a Mahli somewhere. Be like, wow, so that's scary. That <laughs> so you have to be, you know, you have to be like, that's how good they are. So during lunchtime, they're like, oh, get up. And then they, they give us an ace and we study that mata gis yordan. We study gis that we have memorized. Imagine, yeah. like, we barely have time. That, like, the various they, verb forms of all the words. Yeah, like, from 9 a.m., like, from around 10 a.m., or, like, which is lunch around 1 a.m., p.m., they assume that during that time you're studying your gis. So daily gis, 40 to 50 gis, you bring 
memorized. Uh, guess your dal, you know how, how, how it goes. Mata your dal, and then you get lessons. Mata, that's how we sleep. So that routine kind of made it uh, fast tracked, I, I guess, my lesson. Yeah, no, I, I know what you're saying about the pandemic too. It's a bad situation. Nobody's saying it's not a bad situation, but people react to bad situations in three main different ways. Some people get worse off. Some people are able to just survive and they stay the same. And some people build skills like you or reinvent themselves. And those are people who are thriving. So that's wonderful. And I know you have to go soon. So I'll ask you one kind of uh, final question and then give you a, an opportunity to either uh, plug anything or give any final thoughts. The, the last question I have for you is uh, I saw a great video of you doing, I believe, at uh, Anamogar, although it could be Kibriyeti. You'll have to let me know. And it was, I believe, during a holiday and you were presenting in a, in a public fashion. Uh, could you talk about what what is going on there? Because that's during the communion time, right? So what what exactly are you doing poetry about in that moment? Oh, that was actually um, Wazima. Uh, Wazima, okay. So Wazima the, the day is, before? The day before of the, the holiday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember um, uh, I was, I think, a few days before the holiday. Um, Abba uh, said, yeah, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything, but, you know, be, there's a holiday coming up. We have my late. That's all I'm saying. And they just walked away. I was like, wait, what does that mean? <laughs> they didn't Very inferential language. We, we a lot of, <laughs> lot of context based. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what's going on? And then I couldn't, and then I kind of caught the idea. So it could possibly mean two things, mm-hmm. prepare to preach or there's Mahalid, prepare something to, to kind of so that I'm not shocked at the time. Uh, so, uh, Mahalit, during Mahalit, there is, um, three Kanis that are presented at every Mahalit, uh, two Wazimas and one Tallasi. Two of the Wazimas, uh, most Kanis students or Kanis masters will do. Most of the time, the Tallasi is reserved for the Kanis administrator, usually, or uh, the hierarchy, whoever is the highest in Nanos, and they will do. There's a, there's a high regard when it comes to Salasi. So I was able to get the, the blessing of the Salasi. Uh, and I was able to uh, to to do that, to do that wonderful Kane. And it's something I will never forget. Uh, it was just an amazing moment. Uh, and then I, I remember Abba said, you know, come here, stand. And... And then I was just standing there. A lot of people don't see this. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the video, but internally I was shaking. Like I was oh. shaking. I did. I did. You looked know. firm. You looked firm. I. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's just inside. Uh, well, I was a wreck. I was a wreck. I remember like uh, I was standing there and then I was just waiting. I didn't even know what when to go at the time. They they, they finished the chanting and everything. Uh, and then they're like, bel, bel, so I was like, I literally forgot the first words. So for, for a good oh. like 20 seconds, not 20 seconds, but like a whole two years, basically. Uh, I was just standing there. I remember uh, it was, uh, uh, it was, I was hoping that uh, my kane was fit enough for, for the, for the holiday. And because I remember Abat Edi, Abat Yodros, obviously a kane master. They were one known Ethiopia. Uh, I remember Abu Paulus our patriarch. They heard them. They went to Miskai and they heard them do kane, and they used to ask them to come to their uh, dwelling place and do kane for them all the time. And wow. now Paulus Katabalu, the only person that does kane was uh, Abu Theodros. And then they used to be like, you know, people used to be like, how does a monk do Kane? Uh, Again, their Kane is so beautiful, their house Kane. But Atana Zwai ni Tamarut. Zwai is also a beautiful place to learn Kane because in the Magavi Hadis Shatu, if you know them, Magavi Hadis Shatu was the teacher of Abba Theodros, and Abba Theodros was able to teach me. And I, I love their their Kane, their house Kane is beautiful. Some in Nawar Kemi Balo, it's usually in there. Like, they well known for that. Not just the salmon work, but the wordings, the letters, the you know, 
the syllables that has to be done. It has to be to the point. It's not just like just within within the boundary. It has to be fitted perfectly. It has to sound perfect. That's the requirement for Abba. Uh, I remember like like when Tulun Dazi, they always use this um, metaphor. It has to be Abba. And it has to be a wave of things. Kaf, tick, kaf, tick. Kaf is it has but it has to bring the person and not mandar mandarin that has to be the gold of everything. It has to bring everything together. If not, don't even waste our time on me. I know I know how they are, but I'm not but someone I think it was um as uh, it was about the Virgin Mary helping uh the man that eats uh, humans. It was it was someone, Simon, the the person, the cannibal. It was it was that uh, it was that holiday, but someone uh, and I made sure that to resemble someone with a deacon, but someone diakona. Kahana tas kalimat zamidr am kalimat kadasi hazal. Yamidr kahanat yech allama midr kahanat am kalimat kadasi hazal. Kah kadasi wafit azzanu esmanaka maswata gureu la samu miskinu. Yeah, it's a little miskinu masayit, and that's part of the night. And you know, if you're a deacon, you know this, but you know what it means. A lot of people are like, "What does it mean?" I was like, "I'm sorry, I can't tell you." If you know the like the works in the uh, the Bethlehem, a lot of people wouldn't know. Smanek amos hata gureo. If a deacon, if that happens to a deacon, you know how uh, kanat are very upset, and that was the whole concept of it. And then. I remember the moment they say groom now, and I remember the katabef takle sirak was there too. The the great the guama meher was there, and then they put twenty dollars on my head. <laughs> you got I some was, money. <laughs> <laughs> That's part I, of the tradition I, too. I would never forget it. It was an amazing moment uh, for me personally. You know, I know that it wasn't the greatest uh, penny. But that literally just gave me the encouragement. It shows how our fathers want us to grow within the faith. And when they see us trying, how appreciative that they are of uh, the service. So that's what happened. I'm sorry, like I took too long to explain. No, <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> iron sharpens iron as, as one yeah. man sharpens in another. And I know that a lot of people could go find that video and, and see your ministry and and really make sure that they themselves are encouraged. Like you said, you were encouraged by your brothers and by the elders that were in the community. People younger yeah. than you look up to you and will be encouraged by that. I myself am encouraged by that uh, too. Is there anything else you want to plug in terms of if people aren't already following you everywhere, where can they find your your ministry? Where can they find your material? Um, I think if they just search my name, they, they can find anything, whether... Uh, the, the great thing about thing is like you know it's very easy to find it um i'm on youtube i have programs pretty much every week every saturday uh there is a new video that comes out every wednesday i have a lot of people participate in in the service people bring in spoken words poetry they can sing songs and they can send it and then i i post them i encourage them to to serve as well um facebook even tiktok I know, like it's that's not our thing. Uh, a lot of people appreciate it, though. There's a lot of people that are on TikTok. Um, no, on TikTok. by any means, on, on every, on all the I'm media. On, I'm on TikTok, giving random things, um, fighting off. Uh, you know, there's a lot of argument that goes on. A lot of people comment. The comment sections are the fun ones when you go on TikTok because they're, because it's very broad, and a lot of religious people would come and be like, "Hey, that's not true." You know, I would post about. You know the reasons why we venerate the Holy Virgin Mary. And they're like, where does this say that on the Bible? And then it's it's a fun discussion to have. I really enjoy it. So it's it's a lot of fun thing. Uh, but at the end, one thing that I want to say is I want to reiterate what Dagon David said. Uh, the key to um, understanding Orthodoxy in depth lies in in Kane. Uh, when you understand Kane, it's easy to unlock. The door for methods, all the concepts, traditional books, sacred books. Um, one thing that I really appreciate that I that we do here is the um, We read their works here. Hamanu uh, Tabo. We read every night. Hamanu Tabo is an incredible book, and I'm telling. 
how the way they grasp the concept of like, incarnation and trinity all, all these things that we have it's incredible how they word it. it it just touches your heart and all these things are perfectly put for us within the language that we have there is a lot of resources that we have nowadays that we don't often use i remember when i didn't have the resources I remember when I needed people to help me uh, with with the service that I wanted. There was a lot of people that used to complain about this. How come there's no English service to help us? But now that the resources are all over the place, we still don't use the resources that we have, <laughs> which it really baffles me. It's like, okay, we complained about this situation. Here we are. God is like, okay, this is this is this is what you needed. Here it is, and then we still don't utilize it. It's just shocking to me. I'm not, you know, here to bash or anything, but I see it in myself as well. We have the resources to study, to grow ourselves in the faith, but we still don't do it. And I see a lot of people taking the smallest of opportunities to to grow in faith, taking a leap of faith and moving to Ethiopia, moving to places just to learn. And we see this in, in Diakon David and other, Diakon Ephraim, who went to Debra Libanus and Zoa and studied all these things. Uh, and everything is out there for us and we need to we need to learn it uh, as uh, I think Kenny. Um, I can, you know, you know, pro, uh, finish a bit of the silly now. Um, since it is a it is solo, one of Please. my favorite ones, uh, my one of my favorite ones by this is by Megabi Hadis. Uh, this is very, you know, like a scandalous bottom, so I mean, like, girl, now. Uh, this is a modus. So what reason? For what reason was he incarcerated for? The one that gives the mysteries of the mysteries. Mysteries be above mysteries. The child of the mystery. The one that is patient and humble, Sabahagar Yarid Karn, Yarid Hagar, the the countryman of Yarid Karn, which is Kavaro, uh, which is drums. Uh, the priest of Bethlehem. Kahanat, Kamegaru, Tamakaru, Botu, Amatarado, Omotarado, Makonina Elias, Som, that is Fabuzo, Hantarado, too. Uh, that's an amazing concept that that, that it has. So talking about Karn, which is Kabaro, Kahanat, Tamakarubotu, Kahanat, Tamegaru, Tamakarubotu, the priest. Uh, you know, came together and <laughs> whispered around to Mogar to hit him, basically. Uh, so, so for what reason this man, the person that the Kana wants to hit, why is he imprisoned at this moment? Is basically it's about talking about this one that we are in here to, today because during this song there is no kabaro, there is no sanas or anything like that. Uh, so. Kabaro is in prison, basically, is what they <laughs> what they put. Uh, it's crazy. Sink uh, Abita Agathon. The house of Agathon Sink was brought to him by Maratabitus Anazel, his wife's Anazel, because Anazel cannot, <laughs> cannot be used as well. So Anazel brought him this sink, which is food to him. Why? Because it's Mabalai Luta Fata Tasro Taura, Aura Kilitu. Because for Baula Portafar Dobatal, for two months, it's been verdict. There is a verdict for him to be in prison for for two months. Well, as Arihu after our cast of his soul, Mutasroto is the last part uh, because of his imprisonment. Um, uh, his uh, enemies, Beth, which is Makwamia, they rejoice <laughs> because the only thing that is used during some is the Makwamias. And I was like, wow, that is insane, insane. How they come up with the with the, with these things, uh, and Kenny is truly an amazing thing. That's the thing. Uh, that's the only thing that I, I wanted to present today. But um, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> the best Thank thing that you, you can do for yourself. Uh, I'm hoping to hopefully to start something to kind of share my thoughts in this. 
So you can wait on that. This is the first time I'm actually announcing that. I mean, for my brothers and sisters, I'm not a very good teacher, but we can no, learn this all is together. good. This is, a, this is a very good scoop. This is a very good scoop. I don't know if you know Deacon Samara in San Diego. He's going to appreciate the shout out. But him and I had been talking about even, uh, I don't know if you're on Clubhouse, but trying to do Kene and maybe even other prayers. And I know some other people have been doing spiritual activity, do it on TikTok and Clubhouse everywhere. Uh, Diakon Bazin as well wanted to do, he's another brother of ours. He he wanted to present some of that Debra Abbai uh, melody of the liturgy as well. So there is absolutely opportunity with all of these technologies. And I'm I'm so glad you're you're learning this and sharing your knowledge uh, with us. You know, we're, we're not sitting here trying to pretend like you're the the master of all the kene, but you are a, a great student of it and you will be a senior student and eventually a, a professor of it as well, I'm, I'm sure. So thank you so much and God bless your ministry, brother. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for having me, Devon.